In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to try to answer a question. If I know how much something weighs, how many atoms are in it? So say I have a pile of zinc, and it weighs 17.5 grams. How many zinc atoms are in it? We're going to use two things to answer this question. The first is Avogadro's number, which is just a mole. The second is molar mass, which is how much a mole of something weighs. And I talk more about molar mass in my video, reading the periodic table, so you may want to watch that first. We're going to break this calculation, this question, down into two steps. And we're going to talk about each of those steps for a little while. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you go between moles of something and atoms of something. And then we're going to talk about how you go between mass of something and the moles of something. So I've been using this word moles a lot. And if you're not familiar with it, I'll introduce that now. So the mole is just a number. It's like a dozen. So if I have a dozen flowers, I have 12 flowers. I could also have a dozen cars or a dozen people. This, in the same way, the mole can apply to anything. I could have a mole of cars or a mole of people or a mole of flowers. And if I have a mole of any of those things, I have six with a bunch of zeros behind it of those things. It turns out to be about a trillion trillion. So a mole of flowers is about a trillion trillion flowers. Usually you'll see this number written in scientific notation as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And it has a special name. It's called Avogadro's number after the scientist Avogadro. And what we're going to use that to do is go between the moles of something and the number of something. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say, for example, that you know a bar of gold contains 19.6 moles of gold. How many atoms are there? Well, what we can do is we can look at this equality, which tells us there's one mole of atoms and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And that can actually operate as a conversion factor. So here, if you're not familiar with conversion factors, you may want to watch my video on unit conversion first, which introduces conversion factors. So in this case, we want to go from 19.6 moles to how many gold atoms we have. And so what I'm going to do on the left-hand side, I'm going to write down 19.6 moles. And I know that I want to take that all the way to atoms. And so, how do I go between moles and atoms? Well, I use a conversion factor. And what do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of moles. So where does moles go? Moles has to go on the bottom. So I'm going to write mole down here, and that's going to cancel out with the mole I started with. And then I'm going to write atoms up top. And how do I know what numbers to put in there? Well, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd goes with atoms over here in my equality. And so that's the number I write next to atoms in my conversion factor. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then I just write 1 next to mole because that's what's next to moles in my equality. Notice now that my moles are going to cancel out. And when I do that, I'm just going to multiply that in my calculator. And I'll get 1.18 times 10 to the 25th atoms. So a very large pile of atoms. So you can see why we need a number as large as the mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to count atoms, because everyday objects have huge numbers of atoms in them. Okay, let's go the other direction. Let's start with atoms and let's go to moles. That looks very similar. I still use the same conversion factor, one mole to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, only it's gonna be flipped and I'll show you how. Now I'm starting with atoms and I'm going to moles. So I'm going to write 2.7 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. And I know that I want to get to moles way over here. And again, I'm just going to write these parentheses to show that I'm writing a conversion factor. And now atoms should go on the bottom because atoms need to cancel out. And mole should go up top because that's what I want to be left with. And again, 1 goes next to mole and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd goes next to atoms. Now, it's very important that you plug this into your calculator and try it yourself. A very common mistake is that you do this multiplication and you don't put your scientific notation in parentheses. So in particular, the mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you need to put that guy into parentheses. If you don't put the whole thing into parentheses, your calculator will actually divide by 6 and then multiply by 10 to the 23rd. And you'll get something like 10 to the 40th. 
If you're ever doing problems like this and you get 10 to the 40th, it's almost certainly wrong. Because what that means you did is you did not put the numbers that you had in scientific notation in parentheses. So go ahead and grab your calculator and do this problem to make sure you get the right answer. So if you put that number in parentheses, and then we solve for how many moles we have, we'll actually see that we get 0 0.044 moles. That makes sense. We get less than one mole. And since I have 10 to the 22nd atoms that I'm starting with, and that's less than 10 to the 23rd atoms, it makes sense that I have less than one mole as my answer. All right, now we're gonna go from talking about going between moles and number of atoms to going between moles and mass of atoms. And here we use molar mass. So I've, I've clearly laid out the conversion factors you should use under different circumstances in this box here. When you're going between moles and number of things, whether it's atoms or molecules or anything, we use Avogadro's number. When we go between moles and mass, we use molar mass. Hopefully that's easy to remember because going between moles and number, you use Avogadro's number, and going between moles and mass, you use molar mass. And molar mass turns out to be different for different elements. Avogadro's number is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But molar mass depends on how heavy an element is. You can think about it like this. If I have a dozen cars, it weighs way more than a dozen flowers. In the same way, if I have a dozen copper atoms, which is a relatively heavy atom, it's going to be way heavier than a dozen hydrogen atoms. And similarly, when I have a mole of these things, they weigh different amounts based on how heavy the atoms are. In our periodic table is where we find molar mass. So below each element the periodic ta on the periodic table, the molar mass of that element is listed. So you have all these different molar masses listed, and those will tell you how heavy a mole of each of those elements are. So let's go ahead and do this problem. In this case, we're told that a penny has a mass of 2.8 grams, and we want to know how many moles is that. Well, we're going to start out with grams, and we want to go to moles. That means we need to first just write our equality. And the equality we're going to write from comes from copper, because pennies are made out of copper. Typically, a problem will give you the material that you're dealing with. We're given copper, because that's what a penny is made out of, and its molecular weight is 63.546 grams per mole. So I can go ahead and write that as an equality, and I can just say 63.54 grams equals one mole. And that equality is just true for copper. So copper, if there's 63.54 grams of it, I know that I have a mole of it. So whenever you're doing moles to mass conversions, a good first step is to write down that equality. And now I have 2.8 grams of copper, and I want to go to moles. So I'm going to start by writing down 2.8 grams. And I know eventually I want to get to moles. And now I'm going to write my conversion factor. And so I know grams needs to go on the bottom so it cancels out. And that moles needs to go up top so we're left with it. And now I'm going to write 63.54 next to grams, because that's what's next to grams in my equality, and one next to moles. Notice now that my grams cancel out. And when I do that division, I'm going to once again get 0.044 moles. Let me give myself a little space, more space to write that. And we get 0.044 moles. That is how many grams... Or I'm sorry, how many moles of copper atoms there are in a penny? Okay, let's do one more practice problem like that where we're going moles to mass, and then we'll answer our question we had about zinc. So a silver spoon contains 1.3 moles of silver. How many grams is this? Well, once again, since we're asked to go between moles and mass, between moles and grams, we know that we need to use our molar mass. And where do we get our molar mass? From the periodic table. Silver turns out to be Ag. And so you can see down here that the molecular weight or the molar mass of silver is 107.87. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the equality. 107.87 grams is equal to one mole. So that tells me that if I have a mole of silver atoms, it weighs 107 grams. And now I'm going from moles to grams, so I'm going to write down my 1.3 moles on the left-hand side. And I know that eventually I want to get out grams. 
And so I'm going to write my conversion factor such that grams are on top, so I'm left with that, and moles are on the bottom. So I divide by moles here, and I multiply by 107.87, and if I do that in my calculator, I'm going to get out 140 grams. So it turns out your silver spoon weighs 140 grams and it has 1.3 moles. Okay, so we've talked about how you go between moles and numbers of atoms. And we've also talked about how you go between mass and moles of atoms. Now we're going to combine those two things together to answer our original question, which was how many atoms are in 17.5 grams of zinc? This is a multi-step conversion. If you haven't watched my video on advanced unit conversion, you may want to do that as it talks about these sorts of conversion problems. So I want to go to atoms eventually from grams. And here I'm going to use two steps. First I'm going to go from grams to moles, and then I'm going to go from moles to atoms. So 17.5 grams. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from grams to moles. And that's always the first step here if you're going from atoms to, um, from grams to atoms. And remember when I go grams to moles, I need to use the molar mass on my periodic table. And in this case, we're dealing with zinc and its molar mass is 65.39. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply I'm going to have one mole up top, and then I need to put the grams on the bottom. So I put grams there, and in this case, I plug in 65.39. And so what that's going to do is that's going to take me from grams to moles. And after I do that, I'm going to want to be able to go from grams, or I'm sorry, from moles to number of atoms. And what do I do, use when I need to go from moles to atoms? Avogadro's number. So now I'm combining these two conversion factors. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write down another conversion factor. And here, since I'm going from moles, you can see that right up top, that I have moles here. Since I want to cancel out those moles, I need to write mole on the bottom and atoms up top. All right, and then what do I fill that conversion factor in with? Well, Avogadro's number. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms are in one mole. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms are in one mole. And now I'm set. Notice that if I look at my conversion factors, my grams have canceled and now my moles cancel. And I'm just gonna be left with atoms exactly what the problem asked for. And if I go ahead and plug that into my calculator, I'm gonna get out one, 0.61 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So that's how many atoms are in 17.5 grams. Notice what we did there is we combined our use of molar mass, that's that first conversion factor, with Avogadro's number. And that's how we can go from the mass of something to a number of atoms. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. Please leave any questions or comments you have below. Please visit my channel to see a bunch of other videos on chemistry content.